We are called the Marine Corps of St. Pius X. We remain until our last breath the, the children, the sons of St. Pius X. Now, Father and Son and Holy Ghost, Amen. My dear friends, Amoris Laetitia, or Pope Francis, is a, a really spectacular document. I read it for the first time in the class of the Act of the Magisterium. You now, for the, in the seminary, we study heresiology, you know. It's 305 paragraphs, 200 pages, and it's loaded with errors. Yeah, the main uh, the main error of this uh, document is that morality is uh, of situation. It's a progressive morality. So even if you kill your mother-in-law, it's not that bad because you didn't kill this little child there. So you are better off killing your mother-in-law than this little child. It's a progressive, provisional morality. So that even... If you are engaged in a homosexual sodomite union, Francis says we should accompany those unions pastorally. You know? Because even there, there's a beginning of morality. There's a beginning of being good. You know, So it's like uh, the commandments of God, that shall not steal, that shall not take thy neighbor's wife, thy shall not desire thy neighbor's wife, and so forth. Those are, it's a high perfection which is way high up there, you know. And the people who are in a same sex so called marriage, you know, they are trying to get there, you know. And for these efforts, you know, they are saving their souls and they should be accompanied pastorally. Same thing, the divorced people, divorced people who, who dump their, their spouse and took another one. Well, there are conditions if they say that they are kind of sorry and they would like to patch things up, you know, with the children and then be generous. While, of course, they cannot go back to the uh, earlier spouse. If they uh, explain and the pastor understand, then let them go to communion. And also mixed marriages are good because then also the Protestants can go to communion and have you know, Eucharistic hospitality, you know. And on all questions of morality, is 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 in the wrong. For instance, he said that the, the parents should decide or should take care of things when it's not their, their business or when they should consult and ask permission. And the parents should not intervene when or should let others intervene when it is them who have to do the job. I'm referring to sex education. Francis praises sex education in school, which is a disaster. You know. Sex education is the responsibility of the parents. Only the parents have that responsibility to teach their children uh, the morality of this act, which takes place in marriage, and how it happens and uh, at, the, at the proper age, the age of puberty, you know, when... Uh, when the, the children need to learn it from their parents and not from uh, wicked other children or uh, wicked uh, means of communication. You know. It's the parents' office to do so, not the school. And on the contrary, this, he says, it's a parent's responsibility before God, they decide whether to have another child or not. So he endorses entirely birth control. Entirely, you know. So it's if the, having another child is a decision of the parents, we priests have nothing to say about it. No, you must consult to the priest whether there is one of the grave reasons why NFP could be allowed. But these are questions of um, life, life-threatening conditions, serious health conditions that enable the ability of the mother to give birth to child, children in the future or uh, uh, clinical, medically 
uh, evidenced uh, state of depression or dire poverty, which is never the case. Never the case. Because if you are in dire poverty, as you know it so well, the church will come and help you. So, no, not the case. You know? And this, this country is fairly peaceful, there is no war. No, no case. Now, if there is a case, then you submit it to the church. Because your, uh, the, your having children is for the common good of the church. So if, uh, if the common good of the church is affected, then it concerns the authorities of the church. Very much so. No, he says, no, 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 you, you decide. It's, it's, uh, it's up to you. And that's why birth control is rampant in an abyss of the church and even in big segments of tradition now. You know, those who claim to be traditionalists at least. And then uh, in the core of the uh, document, he says, he talks about the dignity of sex. <coughs> and in, the, in, in that case, he is not inventing anything. He is simply stating the theology of the, the so-called theology of the body of John Paul II. John Paul II. And Benedict XVI, who said, Eros is divine. It's something that is of a divine nature. And then he explains because uh, uh, in those things uh, it's an interpersonal conversation in which the other is taken in his uh, in his uh, or her sovereign and divine human dignity. That's what he says in the thing. In his in his uh, so it's dignity. Whereas you know so well. These actions are performed at night, behind closed doors, and without any witness. You know, because we carry the shame in our flesh, because of original sin. There is something which is wrong, which is wounded there, in our nature. And that's why you cannot talk about the dignity of that thing. The, uh, the worth of it is like nutrition. So, if the pleasure does not interfere to the, perf to the reaching of the end, then, and within a Catholic marriage, then, then the, the, the act is good, yes. But you have to fulfill those conditions. But Francis, no, for Francis, no. That thing is in itself good. Good, uh, good per se, you know. Hence the rest of his, uh, of his theology. Whereas the Catholic Church always has one answer, very simple, as you saw, in three letters. A, S, H, ASH. All flesh is ash. We should not glorify in the flesh. To be carnal is uh, to be away from God. The carnal man, says St. Paul, doesn't see the law. He can't understand it. Our Lord repudiated the Jews, and the Jews repudiated our Lord, says Father Manvier, a famous theologian from Argentina, because they were carnal. They have the spirit of Esau. They, uh, they have the spirit of Ishmael. They are carnal. God doesn't, doesn't want them. I love Jacob, and I, I hated Esau, because Esau is carnal. He glorifies in the flesh. We are sons of the Spirit, our Father who is in heaven. He is a Spirit. So whoever is of the Spirit has this sonship of the Father, crying Abba, Father. So the, we must not glorify in the flesh. The flesh is ash, just a matter of time. Your bones, you know, let alone your flesh, but your bones will disintegrate, will be turned into dust. So, just a question of time. What's the state of Father Suero now? What's the state of uh, Mr. Teofilo Koyogi? Who uh, reposes the soul of which you can pray for because it's the, the anniversary well, just a few days ago. What's the state of their body? Well, we don't, we rather not think about it. But that's reality. It's a reality. And it's true. I am not lying to you. And this is what we need to know. If, if God decreed 
this law of mortality, it's because it is for our good, for our good, our humility. Because Adam committed the sin of pride. And so he has to go through this passage of death. We all have. Even our Lord went through it to enable us to escape it in everlasting life. So they are bathing uh, in a total, uh, in a total and uh, complete lie. And that's why we cannot unite with this carnal, worldly church. We don't have the same direction. We don't have the same doctrine. We don't have the same morality. Their morality is horrendous. And that's why they, uh, they fell into those horrible scandals because those horrible scandals declare that they have subdued themselves. They have submitted themselves to the flesh. So in the Philippines, you know, sodomy is rampant among the clergy. It's very big, you know. It's, it's massive in the, in the Novi Sordo. And uh, there was a, a book in France called Sodoma recently, just a few weeks ago. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I talked to you about it. It's about the open secret that in the world, the place where there are the biggest number, biggest proportion of homosexual is the Vatican. <coughs> Did the Vatican issue a denial of it? No. There was no denial. Because the book itself is a collection of interviews of high Vatican officials, monsignors, cardinals, bishops, who confess that either they are gays or that all their predecessors in the Vatican were gays. So it's an open secret. It's hardly a secret. Now, they don't want to talk too much about it because there is still a conservative wing in the Nobusordo church, of which you now the new SSPX now is belonging because it seems if Bishop Williamson is right, I think he's right, uh, a Nobusordo bishop is going to consecrate two bishops of the society. So they are uniting to that church. Not only there is a canonical problem, you know, the, the jurisdiction of the Nobus Ordo is illicit, it's still valid, but it's illicit. You cannot use it if you know it's bad. But secondly, there is this big problem. This big problem obliges us to separate, lest we have part to their torment, lest we have part to the punishments that, uh, that go with falling un uh, under the slavery of the flesh. Hence, this, uh, this fast of Lent, which enables the soul to fly away, to fly away free from the slavery of the flesh. And it enables our life of prayer to take off, our union with God to be pleasant and to be strong. It's these two masters cannot share the same house. It's impossible. <coughs> So um, that's why even though the, the Lenten fast is not mandatory, except on Good Friday and uh, Ash Wednesday today, you know, it's, um, it's, uh, let's, let's go back to the custom of our fathers. All our forefathers did that. Not only that, but they also said bye-bye to meat, hence the name Carnis Valle, Carnaval. That's the meaning of the word carnaval, bye-bye meat, you know. So they, they say goodbye to meat until, uh, until Easter. So not only they were fasting for 40 days, but they were also performing abstinence for 40 days. And the result is infallible. If you're a Catholic, the result is infallible. Your life of prayer will take off. Your ease to um, push away melancholy, sadness, temptations, worldliness of all kinds, all these things will uh, be uh, easily uh, defeated. It has really uh, a power. But the never sort of say, let's not be hypocrites and everything. The Pharisees are hypocrites. And so because the Pharisees are hypocrites, then uh, let us not do penance. Or I just do only little penance, and penance is not that, that, it is not that important. 
because if we think it's important, we are Pharisees. No, our Lord never said that. What does he say in the scripture today? He say, when you fast, he didn't say, don't be like the Pharisees fasting. He didn't say that. He say, do fast. And he says it elsewhere, that devil cannot be cast out except by fasting. That's what he said when he went, went down from Mount Tabor. They couldn't expel the devil. The devil will not go out except by fasting. So our Lord says, when you do fast, do not massacre your face. You know. If you have some perfume at home, you know, and, and uh, you know, it's a time to use it. You know, and, and put a, a, a wonderful face. Yes. It's when, when, when you do fast. So that's what he said. But he didn't say, don't fast. And that's why the Novus Ordo are bigger hypocrites than the Pharisees themselves. They are worse off because at least the Pharisees, they take God kind of seriously and they do fast. They do perform those penance for a wrong purpose, yes. But at least there is somewhat a measure of honor to God. Whereas in the Novus Ordo, nothing is done. Not only that, nothing is done, but they are greater hypocrites. Because they claim not to be hypocrites when they are hypocrites. Because they claim that our Lord is not asking them to do those penance. They claim the name of Christian. They lay the claim to be God-fearing Christians. Or God-fearing, they don't care about it. They, they, they claim to be loving God. You know, They claim to have charity. But they don't have the works that enable us to open our hearts and give some space to divine love. Because if you don't do penance, you are not getting any divine love inside. You know? Because it's, you need to sweep the house, you need to clear the way for the Holy Ghost to be able to come to you. So, it's good for us to know how not to be hypocrites. It's good for us to know what it's all about and where it leads. In the name of Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost.